Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back once again to another Fallout 4 settlement build. Today we're going to be taking a look at this box cart that, as you can see, has been somewhat converted into a general goods store. And by the way, for those of you wondering, any mods I'm using are going to be listed down in the description. But other than that, hopefully you guys enjoy the build. And without further ado, let's take a closer look. Alright guys, so for starters, we'll begin on the outside of the build, and then once we're done checking this out, we'll go ahead and move on to the inside. So for those of you who maybe saw the old general goods store that we did, you'll notice there are quite a few similarities, at least on the uh, decorations I've added to the outside of the build. However, the interiors are definitely quite a bit different, just because the other one was so much bigger and... Honestly, you could do all the advertising inside pretty much, whereas on this one, it's all inside stuck in boxes. Sort of like a pack Brahmin, just on steroids. But anyways, in terms of all the details, you'll notice about half of them are actually functional, and then the rest are really just for looks and just to kind of give it an overall style, such as the backboard and also these signs. I mean, in all honesty, they really don't have any purpose or function, and I doubt anyone would ever consider buying them. But that being said, they're, they really are just kind of junky, at least in my opinion. And when you're going for something like a general goods store, I think that's just one thing that does help out a little bit, is just having some junk around. Because I mean, that is one of the main things people are going to be buying. Just not necessarily stuff like this. More so, you know, your tin cans and other items of that sort, and there's also other things like that aside from the backboard and whatnot, such as the flag, and this is another thing that really just helps out the color of the build, because you'll notice, I mean, really the majority of it is mainly blue and yellow, hence the main color of the cart, and then the curtains, sign, and even the shelf has a little bit of a yellow tint to it, although I'm willing to bet that's just because it's been sitting out so long because what has it been 200 years so I'm sure it probably used to be white or maybe silver back then but as I was saying the flag just adds a nice hint of red but as for the functional stuff we do have things like lights which just brighten up the place and once again add some color and atmosphere which may not sound too functional at first but when you think about it I mean that really is what kind of draws in the customers in the first place and we also have this barrel with fire in it. Not really sure what you'd call this thing exactly, but instead of me focusing on this being a light source, I mainly put it in to keep the customers warm, especially uh, at night times, because I'm sure those could get pretty cold. And we also have the shelf, which does kind of serve as a thing that's just for looks, but also it's pretty functional as well, at least in my opinion, because Obviously, it's advertising everything that's for sale, because at least for this building, the customers can't go inside and check out what's in all the boxes. So this is just kind of a sneak peek or a small taste of what is really available. And just kind of like the Brahmins, although you can't see everything they have, there's always the chance to just go ask the owner of the store. And if they have it, I'm sure they just bring it up for you. And that's kind of what I've gone for here, although... I guess that being said, I think that would be a pretty cool mod to have it so the Brahmins could actually display some of the things, like maybe have a rifle hanging off or even something smaller like a bag of ammo, but who knows, maybe that's just too much to ask for. But as for the outside of the build, I'd say that's pretty much everything. I mean, there are a couple other little tiny details such as the lights up above the counter, obviously the stoplight, and then we also have quite a few of these things just lighting up the whole deck and I know you can't really tell at this hour of the day but just trust me at nighttime it does add a nice bit of atmosphere and I don't think I added any more details onto the back side although that being said that's definitely something I want to do sometime in the future I mean even just trying something small like what we did to the uh, medical center wouldn't be all that bad as you can see that one has a chemicare on the back and then a pharmacy on the front and, I don't know, for this one, I'm thinking we could maybe try a gun store on the back. And for it to make sense, I guess you could just say, maybe it's co-owned or co-operated by 
whoever owns the general goods store. But yeah, like I said, as for the outside of the build, that really is pretty much everything. So now that we've seen all that the outside has to offer, let's go ahead and check out what lies ahead. So I think for this building, it doesn't have as much clutter as, say, our medical center. But then again, I think it does have quite a bit more than something like our bar. And that's really just due to the fact that, really, all the inventory has to be stored in here. Aside from a small bit that's on the outside shelf. But other than that, as you can see, everything is pretty much in boxes or suitcases really depending on what it is, and there's even some ammo and whatnot over on the far left side. And this is something we'll get to in a bit, but I don't know, it doesn't really make too much sense because we're in Fallout 4 and obviously weapons don't break anymore, you don't really need to repair anything. So this is just more, for me, reminiscing of my Fallout 3 days and even New Vegas. But we'll go ahead and start here on the counter and then get to that in a little bit. So. Right here you'll see there's a few loose caps, just to kind of fill up the blank space. We also have a bell, just in the case that the owner or worker is off repairing something, and a customer needs to get their attention, say if they're just really busy and in a hurry, or maybe even if raiders are attacking, who knows. And there's a cash register, which I'm assuming doesn't work anymore. So we've also got the cap stash to the right of that for just a secondary place to store all the caps. So now we'll go ahead and move over to the far right hand side of the build, which I would call the living area. And if you haven't seen any of my videos in the boxcar series before, I'll try and explain this really quickly because I'm sure some of you might be thinking, well this is a store, why the hell would they have all this stuff in it? Kind of a waste of space, especially the bed. But basically my idea behind this was that all these shops and stores inside the boxcars are either going to be portable so, for instance, if they had a lot of Brahmin, they could maybe pull them to a different location or a different town and just advertise all their stuff there and try and make a living in the next town over. Or maybe they just come in and rent out the buildings and then carry all their stuff to a different location. So these buildings or boxcars really aren't meant to be stayed in for too long. So that's why they also have to bring beds or maybe just build beds for the time being and while they're here. But anyways, back here we do have a couple decorations aside from some couches and stuff such as some more storage space for either the owner's clothes or since this is a store, maybe it could hold clothes that they need to sell too. There's also a terminal in the back. I know we've done um, just filing cabinets and boxes of files to keep track of sales before. But in this case I've decided to keep all this store's records on the computer. And there's also some signs, flags, and just other minor decorations to kind of spice the place up and really just fill in empty space. And then as you can see, this is just a small area where the owner could relax and maybe just watch the TV, even though the screen never changes. And now that we've got all that covered, we'll go ahead and move on to the final section of the build, which is both a storage location and also a place to do repairs on, you know, weapons and armor so that's why this shelf here has quite a bit of supplies that would usually be necessary for repairing such items and there's also some paint maybe for paint and armor or even just adding a secondary coat for a weapon that's had its fair share of beatings and there's also some ammo because you know at general goods stores you can pretty much buy anything you want especially in fallout or even games like skyrim so that's why in this building there's pretty much a small bit of everything, whereas in other buildings you might have more of just one specific item or one type of item. But yeah guys, I'd say that'll just about do it for today, so hopefully you enjoyed the build, even though I'm sure it was a pretty small and quick walkthrough, and make sure and let me know your thoughts on it, whether they be good or bad. And also if you have any ideas for future builds or hell even improvements we can make to this, I'd also love to hear those too. And at this point we are starting to run a little bit short on room for the settlement in terms of places we could put the boxcars. So that being said, I'm not sure if we're going to end up moving settlements by the time we fill this up. Or maybe we'll just be tired of them by then. So yeah, I'm not sure about that. Maybe we could end up stacking the boxcars on top of each other or I don't know, coming up with something else. But feel free to give me your thoughts on that. 
But once again, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy the build. And like always, I will see you in the next one.